Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Femininja Project, and thank you so much for tuning in. And as you can tell, we have more than just one guest today. We've got two fabulous guests. Their names are Walt Thiessen, and Walt is a motivational speaker and host of the LOA Today podcast, which is about positive energy, the law of attraction, and your daily dose of happy. He started his podcast in September of 2012 and has currently recorded over 1,500 episodes. We're he is my 1800. hero. 1,800. <laughs> oh, that was a while ago. <laughs> it's a little out of date. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because this was, uh, I guess I spoke to you maybe two weeks ago. So in two weeks time, you've done that many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good to know. All right. And we are also graced with the lovely Alex Standy, and she is a co-host of LOA Today. She is also a woman after my own heart because she is also a martial artist, and she is the queen of setting strong boundaries. So they are going to share their stories with us today. They're going to give them give us some fantastic fantastic insights, uh, especially I'm done here a little bit more about the strong boundaries. And of course, Walt is going to give me some fantastic advice about how I can end up having uh, eight, over 1800 podcasts under my belt or shows under my belt. So let's just start with you, Walt. What in the world got you started in this crazy, crazy uh, land of podcasting? And then to the point, you have 1,800, over 1,800 episodes. <laughs> yeah, over 1,800. And if, if you had asked me 10 years ago when I started, you know, did I think I'd get to 1,800 episodes, I would have given you a funny look. Mm. Like, what are you talking about? I may get done 20. <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> 1,800? Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe next lifetime. <laughs> Actually, I would really like to see that funny look. It would, be, it would have been like, <laughs> huh? <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> but um, yeah, it, no, what happened was um, I, well, this, ha this is the story that so many people tell in a variety of different ways. I, I was, I had crashed and hit bottom and had stayed bottom for quite some time mm -hmm. uh, because the 2008 financial crisis mm -hmm. not only wiped out my business, but it wiped out my wife's business. Mm -hmm. So we went from income to no income in one stroke, which was terrifying. And from that point on, it was about just struggling to survive. So by the time I considered starting the podcast four years later, we were all the savings was gone. We were deep in debt. Uh -huh. And I mean, I didn't know what to do because I had been doing exactly what I had been taught to do from a very young age. And it was mm -hmm. failing me. And I didn't know where to turn. I didn't have any money to hire a coach. I didn't, I didn't know anybody. I had, I had nothing. To, I'd seen the movie, The Secret. I thought there, there must be something going on there because there's all those successful people doing that. So maybe there's something going on, but I don't know what it is. So I figured, well, podcasting is starting to become a thing. I'll just start a podcast and I'll bring on experts and they can teach me for free. And it worked oh. like a charm. <laughs> it worked wow. beautifully. Yeah. I like the way you think. That is so practical. So when you hired these, or not hired, but when you invited these experts onto your show, um, did they know that you were actually secretly just picking their brain for information? The first one did because I just blatantly told them that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I didn't have a lot of cooth when it came to starting a podcast. Like, oh, hey, I want to start a podcast. Can you help me here? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it was, it was, there was nothing hidden behind the curtain going on. It was, uh -huh. it was pretty straightforward. What, what surprised me is how much I love doing it. Mm -hmm. That, that you, to, to answer the question you raised, how do you end up doing 1,800 episodes? That's how you do it. Mm -hmm. Because when you're first starting, and you know what it's like when you're starting a podcast, right? It's, it's a lot of work. You're trying to figure all this stuff out. You're trying to figure out where your guests are going to come from and what you're going to talk about and how long can you talk about it? And does anybody really want to listen to all that? I mean, you're going through all this stuff, right? And it, it isn't until you reach a certain point where you find that you love doing it so much that all that starts to just kind of slip away and it's no longer important, but you have to get to that point first. Mm -hmm. And I think you've gotten there. I mean, I can tell you're enjoying doing this. So you've gotten to that point and, and mm -hmm. you, you may even know in your own mind where you hit that point or when you hit that point. Mm -hmm. But whenever that happens, all of a sudden the whole idea of doing a podcast has a completely different spin to it. Mm-hmm. 
and now it becomes a different venture, a different, a different journey. So, and I know we've talked about this before because, um, you know, uh, full disclosure, you know, to the audience, I've been on your show. So this is the second time that we've spoken. Mm -hmm. And um, you even, you mentioned to me about um, how, when you started out, it was all about the law of attraction. Right. Mm -hmm. And so these were a lot of the guests and people that you were bringing on and the topic that you guys, you would always talk about. And then all of a sudden it was like, okay, well, we've done so many, what, like 400 episodes talking about the law of attraction. And all of a sudden it was like, we need to talk about some other things. Was it easy to segue into other topics? Yes. And the reason it was easy is because I loved it. Mm -hmm. If I hadn't loved it, it would have been like pulling teeth Mm -hmm. to segue Mm -hmm. into other topics. I would have been angst driven about, oh my God, I, I got to pick the right topic. And how do I know it's the right way to transit? I would have been going crazy with all that stuff, mm-hmm. but because I loved it, I didn't really care. It's oh. like, <laughs> I just, I just want to do another episode. That was, that's all that was motivating me. So it became really easy at that point. All I was really doing was coming up with a, a reason to justify doing another episode. And at that point, how long had you been um, doing the podcast when you came to this this revelation? Let's say about the time I, actually that Alex came on the show. What's that about five years ago? Something like that. Yeah, about five years ago. I think so. Yeah. Oh, gosh, you you two really are the ultimate professionals because this is the perfect segue. I wanted to know <laughs> that how the two of you met, how the two of you got together and how Alex became one of your co-hosts, because uh, just so the listeners know, you actually have quite a few co-hosts. You have a yeah. big, long list of them. And, and it's a roster that has shifted over time. One mm-hmm. of the greatest things about um, having multiple co-hosts is that once you get into the mode of doing that, of having multiple people come onto the show, it just, it develops its own flow. Mm-hmm. So one person leaves and then another person comes in and there's almost no effort to any of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, Alex was probably one of the, one of the more tough gets in the sense that I had to actually go out and find her. That that yeah. was a rare <laughs> one, you know, but mo- most of them, they just kind of show up on my doorstep. Alex, I, <laughs> I, I actually specifically was looking for something when I, when I found Alex, I wanted to bring a comedy element into it. And I found her and I knew she had a comedic background and also had an understanding of LOA. So I said, oh, perfect. So I'll reach out to her. So, mm-hmm. so that was one of the few times where I actually went to look for a co-host mm-hmm. and it worked out beautifully, of course. Okay. So I had no idea that she had a comedic background. So um, Alex, <laughs> I want you to tell us about that. I also would like for you to tell us a little bit about that sparkly background. Cause I know that was the one thing yeah. that caught my eye when I was a guest on your show. And it was something of, that Walt mentioned more than once. So um, <laughs> obviously it's part of who you are and what you do. So go ahead and take it away. Okay. Well, first off, I'm a sparkly unicorn, hence the background and the purple. So should have known. The background, <laughs> the background is actually leftover backdrop from my wedding. Oh. So okay. yeah, we kept the sparkle theme. <laughs> okay. And I did actually uh, see some photos. You have a website of your wedding. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. We do. Because I really love to stalk my guests. So I get a really good feel (laughs) for them and their backgrounds and what they do. And you, I must say, are really good of staying kind of like right under the radar. (laughs) Yeah, that's it's a skill that I learned the hard way because I I think it was it started uh, during my depression. Mm -hmm. I had I had started with depression about 10 years ago, maybe even longer, probably about 15 years ago. And I wanted to, this is when social media first became popular. So I wanted to stay in touch with everyone, but I also like, didn't want to be bothered. Like I'm a total introvert. So it's like being online is great for me. So that was, that was part of the staying low key, but also being a part of the population while not being a part of the population. You, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you did a fine job of it. So tell us a little bit about the um, comedian background or comedic background. Because I had no um, idea. This was, you know, Walt just kind of spilled the beans. <laughs> yeah, I just have random ideas of things I like to do. And being being a comedian was one of them. And um, a bunch of people had told me over over a long time over my life that uh, I was funny and that I should do stand up. And I was like, yeah, OK, whatever. But like, who actually does that? And <laughs> <laughs> one day, uh, my, one of my mother's friends from high school came to came to dinner at our house and she was a producer for a comedy show that she does in our local neighborhood. So I was like, all right, I'll give it a try. She was like, I'll give you five minutes. I'm like, okay, 
I did not know how long five minutes was mm-hmm. <laughs> on stage. It's totally different when the lights are on and everyone's staring at you. Five minutes is a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it can feel like 30, but mm-hmm. so I did it. Uh, I wasn't great at first, but I was like, you know what? I, I like that feeling. So mm-hmm. I, I went, kept going back up and I continued with it for about two years. Mm-hmm. And then the depression set in and I shut down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let me just ask you this then, that first day, that first time that you were on stage, and I understand the terror and the horror of that. Um, But for me, I was always on stage dancing, typically Mm -hmm. in a corps de ballet or with a bunch of people. So, you know, the pressure is kind of off. But when you're standing there and you're the one on stage and you're looking into that audience, um, what was your first gut reaction? Was it like, oh, my God, where's the back door? No, it was, it's bright up here. (laughs) 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 And I can't see anyone. So I, I, I took comfort in that thinking that if there was no one out there because I, Mm -hmm. I couldn't see anyone. So I took, I put my blinders on and I did my job. And like I said, I wasn't great, but I got better. And did they laugh? Not at first. (laughs) I see. (laughs) Eventually they had to warm up to me, but I was also well known for crowd interaction. So if I was feeling the awkwardness or if I was feeling like they weren't responding, I would get them involved in the act. Oh, okay. Very yeah. good. Smart. And that's how kind of how I made my name. And then you you talk about the depression and it, you slipped back into that depression. What brought you out of it? Because you certainly seem like you have your um, act together and you're pretty upbeat. Today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it was, it was, it was weird. I think like, I was probably about 24 and the walls just started closing in. My world Mm -hmm. just, anxiety kept getting worse. My world just kept getting smaller and smaller. There was more places I couldn't go without, without fear until one day I just stayed home and never left. And by doing that, you isolate yourself. And then that causes depression in itself on top of mental issues you're already having. Mm -hmm. So, but luckily, I got with some people and I got some psychiatry and I got some therapy and I got medication and over the last 15 years it all worked itself out nice I love I love a happy ending like that so thank you for sharing that that's really important and then so now well what was it about Alex that made you stalk her and find her for your show I don't know I can answer that question not not that I'm unwilling to it's just I'm not sure that I can it was it was a feeling (laughs) It was, it was, it was like, yeah, that's her. I don't know why, but it is. Yeah. And it, has been. it was like five minutes long. Yeah. Yeah. It was real short. Yeah. But, but I knew for whatever reason, and, and by the way, it really has been validated because there are actually three of us. Dan hasn't been on the show um, the past few months because he's been traveling, but I got to tell you when Dan and Alex are on the show together with me on Thursdays, you never know what's going to come out of their mouths. You never, okay. ever know. We don't it's, know. <laughs> it's always off the wall. I mean, it. this is not like planned comedy. This is comedy that just happens. Okay. So now I have written that down in red Thursdays. <laughs> so everybody, you know, to my listeners, mark your calendar and make sure that you check out uh, the the show, the LOA, LOA Today show on Thursdays, because you never know what you're going to hear. That's and true. then my next question is, who is Dan? Dan Mangana. <laughs> Dan Mangana is a really remarkable individual. He, mm. um, he got his education, one year of college education at Oxford. Wow. Um, and then he deliberately left school. Yep. He wasn't kicked out. He deliberately left school because he knew that he needed to go learn from the school of hard knocks. Mm-hmm. And he already had his dream. He wanted to, to build his empire. And he went out and tried to build the first empire. And the first empire failed. He went to build the second empire. And the second empire failed. And I think it was the third one that took off for him. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Years later today, he is a multimillionaire living on the coast of Mexico with his beautiful wife, Olga. They have two kids and he he just has the life of his dreams. I mean, he, he has the kind of lifestyle many people wish they had. Mm-hmm. And his his big passion in life is teaching other people to become millionaires. 
Wow. So I would call him the king of persistence, patience and perseverance. And and understanding how all this works energetically. That's really what he's the king of. I mean, mm-hmm. there are lots of teachers out there. There are lots of people who have written books, you know, especially you know, fabulous books. Um, there are people who participate in things like The Secret. You know, there, there's like mm-hmm. a lot of experts out there. Dan has the ability to not just learn from what other people have said, but to integrate it and to turn it into something else. Mm-hmm. He, he has a way of, you know, he can take the same concept that somebody else is presenting in a way that's maybe more woo-woo, if you know what mm-hmm. I mean by that. Mm-hmm. Yes, and he'll, he'll turn it into, here's how it actually works in the real world. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and he'll have this whole explanation that you listen to it, you say, what did he just say? But it all makes sense it all <laughs> because he has this mind that is just capable of putting stuff together. I mean, he'll tell you himself, he's really not a big spiritual person, right? But everything he talks about is spiritual. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, this is kind of like another segue into the law of attraction because what, mm-hmm. the way you describe him, um, you know, he, he seems incredibly intelligent, um, he is. but not in the book learning type of way in the real life situation type of way. And that, especially as I'm staring at your background in the universe behind you um, and the law of attraction, because I know that's how you got started in doing the podcast anyhow was law of attraction. So would you say that that's probably what he is practicing or what is um, guiding him or directing him? Well, sure. I mean, the law of attraction uh, is a it's a principle that basically drives everybody's lives, whether they know it or not. Mm -hmm. What Dan does is, uh, it, it, I can't, I wouldn't want to say that it's the law of attraction that's making everything happen. Mm-hmm. What what is making everything happen with him is that he keeps building his own understanding far beyond where other people understand, mm-hmm. and he's able to teach that. Mm-hmm. He's able to teach that to many many people. So he yes, law of attraction certainly is playing a, a significant role. But what's playing an even major, even bigger major role in in his life and in his success is his ability to learn all the different kinds of modalities that he picks up on and then integrate them in what he's doing. So he'll take Mm -hmm. a piece of this and he'll take a piece of that and this over here and then add this into that over here. And he basically constructs this new thing that didn't exist before, although it Mm -hmm. came from that person and that person, that person, and that person. Mm -hmm. So he's an integrator in that sense. He integrates ideas together. Wow. Brilliant. So then, um, Alex, when you first met Dan, did you know this about him? Did you know his background or did the two of you just automatically hit it off for some strange reason? (laughs) It was weird. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) me and Dan never met. I never like to research the guests that we have on. Dan Mm -hmm. came on as a guest at first before we were like, Oh, please come back. So right. <laughs> he came on as a guest. I don't like to do any research. I like to listen. I like to be surprised. I like to meet the people and get to know them throughout the hour. But with Dan, I don't know. We just had this this click, and it was it was too many synchronicities. So it was like we're both black. We're both the same age. We we're both autistic. It was just like so many things that were that we had in common. And it was like we just met. But like, hi, I feel like I've known you my whole life and then like he was like send me your email and now we're best friends so (laughs) wow that's crazy okay now this is way off the subject but it's something about you that just really intrigues me um of course if you look at my background you obviously know why and (laughs) while we explained um the the spirit of the warrior when you had me on your show so Mm -hmm. um i know you understand that we're all about love peace uh harmony and all that stuff but do not cross the line right so I want to know, um, Alex, how you got involved. It's I, I believe it's Kempo Karate. Is that what you do? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's my so style. when did you get interested in karate? What was the uh, motivating factor? What do you, what, what keeps bringing you back to the mat? Hmm. I started karate probably about sixth grade. I needed an extracurricular activity because I was a very uh, rambunctious child. I was running around. It's so much energy. So my parents are like, what can we do to get her to sit down? And someone suggested karate. And I think gave my parents like uh, free uh, first five lessons were free or something like that. And it came with a free gi. And <laughs> I went and I loved it. And I advanced so quickly. Like they, I was in by eighth grade, I was put in with the 16 year olds because 
of the level that I was at. So it was like, I wasn't vibing with the children's class anymore. So they had to move me up. So I got to hang out with the, with the adults and I vibe more with adults. So it all worked out, but I got up to about my blue belt, mm -hmm. which is about halfway to black. And then I had to stop because my family couldn't afford it anymore. And I've always wanted to go back. I went back briefly for about a year in my twenties and then again, ran out of money, <laughs> had to, had to cut it off. But yeah, I'm still looking to get my black belt. It's, it's a life goal for me. Mm -hmm. Well, I have all the confidence in the world that you're going to be able to get that black belt. I just, Thank I you. see it actually floating above your head. I'm just so. waiting for a good school to open up nearby. That's what I'm waiting for. Cause I don't want to have to travel all day. Oh, I can understand that. Yeah. Well, you could always open your own school, but you know, just run it and hire good teachers. That's true. That's true. <laughs> mm -hmm. Could be another business for you. You never know. One business at a time. We got to open the tattoo shop first. Ooh, okay. Do tell. So my husband's a tattoo artist. We met about three years ago. We got married last year and we are just got finally got the license in Massachusetts. He was licensed in Rhode Island. And now mm -hmm. we got the license in Massachusetts. Choose it. So now we're looking at loans to lease this place and then we will be able to open up our tattoo shop. Do you have a tattoo? I have plenty of tattoos. <laughs> do you have a unicorn? I do have a unicorn. I have a giant one that takes up my whole thigh. Wow. Yeah, that my husband did as a birthday present. Oh, that was nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's go back to Walt. So now here you are with all of these co-hosts, how do you juggle everybody? How do you even know? Okay, so I know, all right, I'm looking at my schedule. It's Thursday. I know it's going to be Dan and Alex. Mm -hmm. But how do you keep everybody straight? And do you, so you, you do a daily podcast. Do you do it um, like five days a week or do you do the weekends as well? Just five days a week. I, I give myself the weekend off. Okay, good. So uh, you're normal. Okay, good. Yeah. Now. Well. No, <laughs> it's true. There was a time when I was doing Sundays. She's absolutely right. Well, no, we were doing twice a week, seven days a week. Well, twice, yeah, for one year, a yeah, day, seven days yeah. a week, yeah. For, for one like, year, it was crazy, sweet, bro. <laughs> well, I didn't. That was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> That was in my highly addictive. I, I was so addicted to it. I couldn't get enough of it. Then I finally said, okay, I'm getting enough. It's fine. It's good. I, I can do oh five and, and be done with that. <laughs> that is just that's crazy. When it, that's when it officially went to daily dose of happy, not twice a daily dose of that's happy. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so did you actually say this is your, you know, double daily dose of happy? Was that nope, kind of the tagline? <laughs> I, I don't know that we actually made it official. We, we said that a few times. We definitely have said it. Yeah. yeah but mm -hmm. I don't know. We ever, we, we never really, you know, put it in granite or anything. Like that. Okay. So let me ask you this too. Uh, all right. Because the daily dose of happy, 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 happy. Do you ever feel like, oh, I just don't want to be happy today? Or do you feel like, you know what? Even just the thought of uh, getting on with your guests and your co hosts actually just lifts your spirits and, and, and the happiness starts to flow right away? The answer is yes to both. And okay. the reason the, <laughs> the answer is yes to both is because. We, we call it your daily dose of happy, but really the goal with every episode is to feel better. And better mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily have to be happy. Mm -hmm. It can be happier. Mm -hmm. you know, so if you're feeling depressed and by the end of the show, you're feeling indifferent, you're happier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're, you're not necessarily where you want to be, but you're in a better place. Mm -hmm. and, and so especially with the second question you asked, I think it really hits the nail on the head. We want every single episode for me, Alex, my other co-hosts, the guests, and the listeners to all be feeling better by the end of the episode. If they are, that's a successful episode. Mm -hmm. And I think in the past year, I've had one episode that wasn't successful and it didn't get published. <laughs> it was wow. only one, you know, I mean, Who they're all it? successful. Who was it? <laughs> Actually, no, none of the co-hosts were there that day. It was just me uh, and this guy. Uh, he was, oh, he was a piece answer. of work. <laughs> he was a piece of work, let me tell you. I, I was, <laughs> My, my, my co-host for the day uh, couldn't make it. She had to, to back out of the day at, uh -huh. uh, at the last moment on that day. And this guy had the nerve to come onto the show and start ripping her apart for something she had written on her website. <gasps> oh, so wow. She, she couldn't there, even be, be there to defend herself. Wow. I, I lit into him. <laughs> I've never yeah. done that with a guest. I lit into him. <laughs> but that did was you, the only one. Did you at least save the episode for your own you know, um, posterity. 
No, I threw it out. If you really want to find it, you can find it on YouTube. It's going to be in the YouTube channel somewhere because I didn't delete it there. Oh but my. Um, look, yeah, it look was... at her face. Look at that <laughs> face. I love some good tea. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a piece oh of my God. Oof. Oh, But man. that's that was that's so rare though. I mean, literally, mm -hmm. that's the only episode I have ever done that I didn't record and, and put onto uh the podcast. Wow. All the rest of them have gotten me, you know, the, exactly what I wanted to get to, which was mm -hmm. feeling better by the end of the episode. So, so I um, guess you know, he he did not get that memo. Apparently not. No, mm -hmm. he did not understand the assignment. Yes. Well, I, I guess it depends on what you consider to be understanding. <laughs> because he he gave me fair warning, and and I was okay with this. He gave me fair warning before he came on that he had issues with the law of attraction. I said, well, that's fine. I'm okay with that. We can talk about that. We always yeah. like to hear a different view. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So that, that that wasn't the problem at all. What he didn't let me know was that his whole motivation was trying to find ways to push people's buttons as fast as possible. Oh, he was a live troll. Got it. Yes, he was mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if, if Alex had been on that episode, he probably would not be alive what? today. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now let's start talking about that warrior spirit again, because it mm. is very strong. The force is very strong with us, and it does actually go through a screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It sure does. Yes, it if does. That, if I was on that episode, no, first of all, we don't talk like that on the show. We do not. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't do the disrespect, especially if somebody's not there to defend themselves. Mm, no, we're not having that. Mm -hmm. So that's another little perfect segue into you and your boundaries. You certainly are the queen of strong boundaries. And I would love to hear more about that. And I know the audience would love to hear more about that, uh, not only about how to set strong boundaries, but how this came about and maybe some tips or whatever that you can share with the audience of how they can be the boundary queen in training. I mean, obviously. They're... <laughs> Prince and princesses. Yes, yeah, you know, you know, maybe just little apprentices, <laughs> you know, whatever. So I started um, with boundaries. Probably, I was probably in my twenties, and I and I was having issues with my father. Mm. And long story short, I ended up going no contact with my father. But back to when I was going through my depression and anxiety phase, I called my father. We were best friends. Called my father, and I told him, "I feel like committing suicide." I'm going to go check myself in. Mm -hmm. And his response was, well, what am I supposed to do while you're gone? Not in a way like, oh my God, I'm going to miss you. Are you okay? But more like, I'm going to be bored while you're being hospitalized. And I took that and I was like, bet, I see where you're coming from. Okay. I see how you are now. So I took some time away from him and I thought about things and I realized like my life is a little more peaceful without his drama. So mm -hmm. I kept that going for a few years. And then I started applying it in other places in, in people in my life where it was like, if I don't like you or I don't like what you say, I realize I don't have to put up with it. Mm -hmm. I can just shut you down right there and I don't have to deal with you ever again. And I just kept it that simple. So cut to, I let my father back in my life. We, we, we would talk, we would hang out. And then he crossed the line again. He decided to cheat on my stepmother and put me in the middle of it. I didn't oh. even know I was in the middle of it. <laughs> he told me, well, actually I got a phone call. No, sorry, a Facebook message from some girl I didn't know saying, oh, I can't wait to go pick out bridesmaid dresses with you. And I'm like, I'm sorry, and you are? <laughs> she goes, oh, I'm your dad's fiance's daughter. And I'm like, I don't even know who you are or what's going on. But so anyways, I figured it all out. I told my stepmother what was going on. She kicked him out. He dis disowned me and I'm like, okay. So yeah, back to no contact. And I haven't spoken to him in probably 10 years. So that's wow. where my strong bond healing from childhood trauma is where my boundaries stem from. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations and you go girl. I mean, what a story. <laughs> yeah, I got a bunch and of them. Yeah, well, I'm sure you do. And way to stick to your, your you know, stick to your guns, so to speak, but uh, you know, to your principles. Yeah, it's it's I find it's easier if you can do it with your parents, you can you can do it with anybody because like who means more to you than your parents? Right, 
Right. And that's that's basically what that was definitely the acid test. And that was going mm -hmm. through my mind, because when even we were started the conversation about boundaries, I thought, well, you know, it's kind of easy to have boundaries with strangers or blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But when you get to family members mm -hmm. and the way that they just kind of like, you know, can infiltrate your life and, you know, take over your brain. Um, so, yeah, that's that's an incredible story. Yeah, you just have to realize that no one has the right to treat you any certain type of way, no matter where they are in your life. Mm -hmm. I have a really good friend uh, that I went to graduate school with, uh, much younger than me, of course, um, went mm -hmm. to PT school together, terrible boundaries, horrible, and had a lot of issues and stuff. And it, it, it's a long, long story, but it was after we had graduated and she was seeing a therapist and um, this therapist had her buy this book and it was a book on boundaries. And mm -hmm. so this friend of mine called me and she, you know, so let's have lunch. And she gave me a copy of the book. She had bought a copy of the book boundaries for me. Mm -hmm. And she says, oh. well, and she, she did have, she has a little baby girl voice. She still does. She's in her fifties. And she says, you know, well, I just think that you really don't have very good boundaries either. And that maybe you could, you know, learn something from this. And I'm going, well, okay. So I'm reading <laughs> the book and I'm like, that's her. Oh, this is another friend. Oh, this is, you know, me, you know, so I could see all of this. And the funniest part about this book, because when I called her and I says, yeah, I see you're on this page. I'm on this page. And she says, I don't see me in any of this. But the funny, <laughs> look, right? You but the page funny, 18, paragraph three. <laughs> that's exactly what I did. It's like, <laughs> I can come over and highlight your copy if you want me to. <laughs> now, I still have this book. And so that was so many years ago. I still have this book because she had actually written on the inside of the book, the cover of the book, you know, to Cheryl, you know, maybe you can learn the take home message here and let me know what it is. So she Ooh. basically wanted me to do her therapy homework for her. Yeah. So it was a very interesting, yeah, I still have the book though. And every time I see it, I just have to laugh. She still doesn't know, you know, page 118, paragraph three. No, she still doesn't get it. One of the things that uh, Alex hasn't really touched on here, she, she touched on it really briefly, but it, I think it's played a major role is she mentioned earlier how both she and Dan are on the autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think is really valuable for somebody who's in that, on that spectrum is they have a level of intuition that other people don't have. True that. Mm -hmm. it, it, I think it, it served you with your father when, when you were dealing with your, mm -hmm. your issue with your father. It, it serves you in so many different ways. It's, it's almost hard to quantify. It really is. And it, it, it gets weird for people because like I go off vibes. So like when when I'm meeting Kenny's friends or he comes and he's like, oh, this is such and such a person. And I'm like, they'll leave my house. And I'm like, they're not welcome again. Mm -hmm. I don't like them. And then maybe like a month later, they'll be like, I'm not talking to so and so anymore because of this, this and that. And I said, why don't you just listen to me in the first place? We could have saved so much time, <laughs> <laughs> so much time, effort and heartbreak. We could have just saved it. <laughs> so I'm really curious, though, with this um, intuition that you have, have people tried to tell you along the way, oh, you know, that you're exaggerating or don't listen to, you know, oh, you're making it up or, mm -hmm. I mean, the things that people tell you, you know, especially when you're functioning off of your intuition, which I think is so powerful and so important that, you know, it's almost like, um, you know, you, we're being conditioned not to listen to that inner voice or not to listen to the in intuition. Mm -hmm. Yep. I've been gaslit my whole life telling me, don't listen, don't listen to yourself don't do this, don't do that. They're, you know, they're not doing that. They're doing something else. You're, you're not understanding or whatever. And I'm like, but in the end, I'm always right. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think I see a t-shirt or a bumper sticker there, <laughs> but in the end, I'm always I'm right. Always right. <laughs> Every wife gets that t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, so now, well, let's go back to you. when did you decide to um, kind of like segue into motivational speaking? Because it seems like that would be a natural, pretty much a natural uh, transition with so many podcast episodes and the fact that you're so passionate about it and that you love it so much. It's one of those things I haven't really completed the transition. It's, mm -hmm. it's sort of, it, it's in process at this point. So I'm not sure I can give you a, a definitive answer, but it, you're right. It just kind of, it, it's a natural segue. It mm -hmm. just 
one kind of leads to the other. And I, I think for me, it isn't going to be so much about, I'm going to get up in front of audiences and, and motivate them. I don't think that's really what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's going to be more like, because of all the episodes that I've done of the show and all the wonderful people like Alex that I've had on the show, I, I'm, I'm finding that that is my motivational speaking, mm-hmm. that that's where the speaking actually takes place. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's a, a thing that I've been doing over the last, um, three, four or five months on the show now, where when I have a guest on, I did this with you too. Um, at, toward the end of the show, I'll thank the guest on behalf of people that they've never seen, never met mm-hmm. because of all of the impact they've had on them. I think that's where we're at right now. The, this whole 21st century technology thing has completely turned everything that we used to know about mm-hmm. how people are influenced by you know, the, the entertainers in their lives or the people they listen to on television or on radio or whatever, um, that, that whole dynamic has shifted so entirely that today you, you can't really point to the, the same kinds of things you could point to, say, 30 years ago. They, mm-hmm. they, they just don't really play out the same way. So today it's about, I heard somebody on, a, on YouTube, I, I, I listened to a podcast episode, somebody was talking about something in an article I read that I picked up on a Google search. I mean, that's the kind of world we're in today. Mm-hmm. So I don't think of myself as a motivational speaker in the sense of, you know, I got into my suit and tie and got up on stage and I talked to an audience of a thousand. I think of it in terms of somebody pick something up that I recorded at some point and they, they heard it and they listened to it. And they said, wow, that really resonates with me. That's mm-hmm. what today's motivational speaking is about. Oh, that's excellent. That's, that's brilliant. And I agree, especially now it seems like that um, instead of listening to the professionals and listening to the, you know, the um, talk show, radio talk show hosts, uh, hosts in the news and everything that we're basically communicating with each other one-on-one in ways that we never have before. Exactly. And I think a lot of that is of course, because we have the technology, but um, with COVID, you know, and the fact that we were all kind of like locked down, that's when it was like, well, we've got this technology at our fingertips that we can use it and talk to people all over the world. And to me, that for me, as a someone who has her, a podcast, to me, that is so incredibly valuable. And I had no idea how right? it was going to impact me in such a positive way. You know, yeah. I was the one that was like, uh, was dragged into podcasting, kicking and screaming, going, what is this podcast? Stuff? <laughs> You know, I had no idea what a podcast was, why I would ever want one. People told me I'd be good at it, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, and I think that's probably when you said um, for you, you know, everything just fell into place and it was effortless, that it just woke up one day and it was like, oh my God, look at all these incredible people that I have in my life right now that I've been able to talk with, communicate with, help them share their stories. I can share my story. And it just makes for such a strong connection, the human connection. Yes, absolutely. In fact, um, the, to me, the big shock is you, you go through the steps like you just described. You make these connections, you interview people, you get to know them and so forth. But the shock is a listener writes in and they heard about it. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait a minute. There's a li- there are listeners here? <laughs> where, where do they come from? <laughs> Well, that's, that's who shock. that person is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a surprise the first time that it happens. You know how that feels. It's like, yes. oh, yeah. God, somebody's actually, and, and then you start, you know, because you have ways you can measure, um, you, you can you can see how many people are tuning in or downloading an episode and so forth. And you look at the numbers and you say, where are these people coming from? Or who are these people? And who are they? Yeah. I've yeah. met one in real life. Well, did you really? Yeah, it was, it was weird. I was at... It was right before COVID. So right before we were about to put our masks on and I was in a store and somebody heard me talking and said, I recognize your voice. And I was like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) And then she was like, you do a podcast? I said, yeah. She was like, about law of attraction? I said, yeah. (laughs) And I was like, no, there's no way. There's no way. Because this was like two years ago. I was like, oh my God, I've been spotted in real life. I have to move. I'm too famous. (laughs) (laughs) I just, I need to be on Real Housewives of Cape Cod. I just, I'm famous. I have to go. Okay, so that that really is, kind of, that that's hilarious, first of all. <laughs> but that really is true. It's almost like, oh my God, you know who I am? Right. <laughs> you know what I've done? 
<laughs> you know, it's it's almost like one of those, I think I'm just going to have to go hide in my basement for a while or, you know, it, it's really, it's really weird. It is really yeah, weird. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I know that feeling too, because I, I have met some of the listeners. One of them is actually my realtor. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> The guy who does my real estate is a guy who um, met me through listening to the podcast. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, and how did that go? So far, so good. I mean, we're, we're, we're getting to a point where he's actually going to be doing some work for me, finding a home. So it's going to play out very, very nicely. But yep. um, oh, it, my, my, my wife and I met with him actually at one point. We went to a, a local uh, coffee place and just uh -huh. had a chat with him one day. It was wonderful. Oh, just, that's so funny. Just learning so, about him and so forth. I've had a couple of people who have listened to listen to the show regularly, um, but they're actually like there's two or three women in the dojo, young women hmm. who have listened to. And the first time that um, one of them said, oh, yeah, I listened to your podcast. And I was like, you know, I wanted to pull my gi top over my head. And just like, <laughs> oh, yeah. That's not me, really. The level of cringe. <laughs> yeah, really. It's cringe worthy. She was, oh, yeah. And she says, and this was the episode I was listening to. And she says, I was running when I was listening to it. I actually had to stop running and say, did she say what I think she said? <laughs> So yeah, it's kind of funny. And it's like, oh, okay, well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> it it's actually, I find it to be very um, soothing and reinforcing. Mm -hmm. Because I, I well, I've never, I, I, I can't imagine you would ever run into a listener who didn't like the show because they would stop being a listener. Right. right. So, right. so all the listeners, and I've run into quite a few and, and had conversations with a few. And, and it's always a wonderful experience. Because mm -hmm. clearly I had a nice impact on that person mm -hmm. and then they're feeding it all back to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what a wonderful feedback to get, right? It's exactly. all positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It really, it, it just fuels you. So, well, what do you see as the future for your show? I'll probably keep doing it. <laughs> well, I kind of figured that much. <laughs> I have I, no I assume. idea. I have no idea. I'm actually entering a time now where I could see there'd be some kind of significant transition going on. Mm -hmm. um, it's not there, there's a, there's a thing going on in my life that I have not talked about on the show yet and not ready to, and that that could definitely impact um, what goes on in the the days, weeks, and months ahead. But how? I don't know. See, mm -hmm. that's part of the thing. We're on a journey here, right? And when you're on a journey, all you really know is what the current highway signs say. You, you mm, really, right. I mean, you don't really know what's happening hundred miles down the road until you get right. there, you know? Right. So I don't know what's going to happen. That's part mm -hmm. of the fun. Mm -hmm. What would you say, what advice would you give somebody who's listening right now? Who's thinking, man, this podcast thing sounds like a really good idea. Um, what advice would you give somebody who's thinking about maybe starting a show? Before you try to do any research into equipment and platforms and all the kind of stuff, Get out your phone, get out the little recording app that's in your phone and do a podcast right now into that app. No, nobody, nobody actually asks to hear it. Just mm -hmm. do that and find out whether you like doing a solo podcast or maybe talk to a friend and say, do pretend we're doing a podcast together. Let's let's do an episode together mm -hmm. and just try it. Because what I think happens is people get themselves so worked up about resolving all the issues. They never actually get to the point where they find out whether they like doing the podcast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you find out pretty quickly, whether or not you like it, first of all, if you find you don't like it, then you're going to move on quickly. And that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you find that you do like it, all of a sudden resolving all those other issues is going to be so much easier mm -hmm. because you like it so much. Mm -hmm. So before you do anything else, just do a faux episode mm -hmm. just to see if you like it. That's really excellent advice because I'm not exactly sure what the statistics are, but I think that it's um, what that the typical podcaster usually stops after 10 episodes. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, you know, they're just kind of flailing and you think about, oh, I'm going to do a podcast. I'm going to have all these listeners and I'm going to have, it's just going to be so great. And then you realize it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why you have to love it because mm -hmm. if you don't love it, then it's drudgery. Mm-hmm. There, there's not a lot of in between. It's either you love it or you don't. And if you don't love it, man, there, you can't get paid enough to do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. True that. <laughs> right? 
You're right. And as you know, we don't get paid a whole lot, do we? <laughs> no, nope, that, that's going to change over time. That is going to change. It's starting to change already. Yeah. It is. But it but is. Yeah, it has to start with doing it from love. If mm -hmm. you if you do it from love, you can do it's possible to do 1800 episodes. It's possible to do 100 episodes. It's mm -hmm. possible to do 400. Mm -hmm. it, what really comes down to is how much do you love it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just have one more question for you, because it seems like I already know the answer to this. <laughs> it seems like you really love people. I do. Except I for do. that one person on <laughs> that one actually, show. Actually, I love him too. Oh. I just I just don't want to have him back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can love him, but not like him. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because everybody, including him, who have been on the show, brings a new perspective to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't like his perspective very much, but I learned from it. One mm -hmm. of the biggest things I learned from it, this is a guy who decided from a very young age he wanted to become a millionaire his very first project worked wow he became a millionaire on his very very first project so within like a year and he worked hard for that year but within a year all of a sudden he's a millionaire mm -hmm. and what i learned from this is the people who don't go through the hard knocks don't appreciate it as much preach they just don't appreciate it and Amen he's one of them. that yeah, that's why he is a button pusher because mm -hmm. he doesn't have anything else to hang on to. All he has is he had his success and that was it. And he did, the, the person who had the least to teach you about how to be successful is the person who didn't have to crawl on their knees in order to get there. Right. Because mm -hmm. what do they have to teach you? Well, you just go do it. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> that's all they have to tell you. They got nothing else. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas the person who had to, you know, drag themselves over hot coals in order to get there. That person's got a story to teach you. Mm -hmm. That person's got something and, and they're going to uh, develop appreciation along the way mm -hmm. in a variety of different ways. I mean, you mentioned, I do love people. Mm -hmm. I didn't always, mm -hmm. I didn't always. One of the reasons I didn't is because I didn't really love myself. Mm. And I didn't understand that I didn't love myself. Mm. If you had asked me at that time, do you love yourself? I would have said, of course I do. And I would have been lying without realizing that I was lying. Mm -hmm. But what happened, and the podcast was really the turning point for me, is that I had started off as, as a very much of an introvert, had been introverted most of my life, and then found that doing a podcast, I'd done a number of other things to come out of my shell, but doing a podcast had done more than anything else to help me become more extroverted. And I liked wow. it. And it felt good. So that's where the love of people came from. Because as I found myself having an avenue to do that kind of coming out, mm -hmm. I loved myself more. And as I did that, all of a sudden, I loved everybody else more. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. So Alex, what can you say if you could um, just kind of sum up your podcasting journey? And of course, it's probably been enhanced by such an amazing co-host. But <laughs> what would you, I mean, what has this meant to you? Um, I'm, I'm going to cry, but it means the world to me because I've been able to share my story and my journey and what I'm going through. And people have told me through Walt that I've helped. Aww. That's a great feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's wonderful. Okay. So is there anything else that we have not covered? 1800 like episodes to... worth? Yeah, there's quite a bit. What do you have in mind? <laughs> <laughs> well... Oh, you mean in five minutes? Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I can tell you this. Um, you made comment about my the background that I use um, mm -hmm. when I do these shows. Um, mm -hmm. It's a picture of, of a starry sky in space. And the reason I picked that one is because it's a reminder to myself. Every time I put it on the screen, I'm reminding myself that the universe has my back because it's mm. always behind me when I do the shows. It reminds me of that too. Every Does day. It? Yeah. 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 I'm like, I tell Kenny all the time. I'm like, it'll be fine. The universe has our back. Don't That's worry it. about it. It's That's all it. good. <laughs> and then what about your background? What does that say to you, Alex? It reminds me to always stay sparkly and to always shine, no matter what the situation. Oh. I just love that. And that's Alex all over. Oh. It is. It is. 
She, she well, has been on episodes where she was in pain because she had to go through some medical procedure, but she always sparkles. Wow. Yeah. That's a special skill to have because I, I know what it's like to be in pain and just to kind of get out there, put a smile on your face and just soldier And it's not it. fake either. That it, It's not fake until yeah. you make it with Alex. No, no. I'm already here. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, it's her way of like taking a step into a new place. Plus, it's like it's like Walt was talking about earlier about how it's literally a daily dose of happy. Like going on the show makes me feel better that day. Mm -hmm. You know what? Tell the audience how they can find your show. God, it's almost impossible not to. <laughs> well, I would imagine so. Yeah. <laughs> Put it this way. Take your favorite <laughs> podcast platform. For most people, that's going to be Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Mm -hmm. Look up LOA today. You'll find it. Subscribe. You're done. But if you really have trouble, there's actually a link that I can provide um, through the website. Just go to LOAToday.net forward slash follow, and it will okay. show you like the top 10 options where you can find us on the podcast platforms in case you can't oh, find it. I know about way. that. <laughs> So basically, if they can't find you, they're not looking. Pretty much. Yep. Yeah. Okay. It, 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 if you can't find us, it, it basically means you just didn't trip over us. <laughs> Yet. Yes. Yet. <laughs> well, Alex and Walt, this has been so much fun. This has been absolutely delightful. I just love talking to both of you and having you on the show has just been a really special treat for me. So thank you so much. And you know what, Walt, I'll, when I hit... 1500 podcasts or 1500 episodes you are going to be the first one to know yeah woohoo! i love it <laughs> love it it's lonely at the top we need more people please <laughs> yeah i'm sure it is very lonely at the top yeah it's but uh, I'm here. we're the only ones yelling <laughs> <laughs> i'm working on it okay i'm doing the best i can you're doing great you're doing wonderful oh, thank you so much for having us today too Oh, it's been wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. And everybody, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. Please do go check out the LOA Today show. Um, I have seen several of the episodes. These, these, They're just amazing. If you really want to feel better about yourself, to feel better about life, get a little daily dose of happy, and just feel better about, no, oh, I don't know, just knowing that the universe has your back because it does. And that is the way of the Feminine Job.